afternoon and thank you for joining us on Future TV. I'm Linda Tamim and these are today's headlines. Lawmakers fail once again to elect a new president as differences between the March 8 and 14 alliances have led to a lack of quorum in the second parliamentary session. Reacting to today's session, Lebanese forces leader Samir Jaja says the March 8 coalition is threatening to cause vacuum in the presidency. The UN refuses to deliver humanitarian aid across borders into Syria without the approval of Damascus. Lawmakers have once again failed to elect a new president as differences between the March 8 and 14 alliances led to a lack of quorum in the second parliamentary session aimed at choosing a new head of state. While the March 14 camp held on to its candidate, Lebanese forces chief Samir Jaja, the Hezbollah-led March 8 alliance, except for Speaker Nabih Beri's development and liberation bloc, boycotted the second round of the elections over a lack of consensus on one candidate. Beri set Wednesday, May 7th for a third round of voting. March 8 MPs told several media outlets in Parliament that there would be the needed two-thirds quorum of the 128-member Parliament only if there was consensus on one candidate, referring to Free Patriotic Movement leader MP Michel Aoun. But future Bloc MP Ahmed Fatsfat snapped back, saying if Aoun wants to be a consensual candidate, then he should adopt the March 14 stance from Hezbollah's arsenal and the Special Tribunal for Lebanon. Lebanese forces leader Samir Jaja has accused the March 8 camp of seeking to impose vacuum in the position of the presidency following the failure of the second round of the presidential elections in light of a lack of quorum at Parliament. During a press conference, Jaja said the camp is forcing us to choose between its presidential candidate or vacuum. He noted that despite the various political disputes, the presidential elections have never been obstructed over a lack of quorum. Furthermore, Jaja accused the March 8 camp of abusing and blackmailing the Constitution. The Lebanese forces leader also reiterated his demand for the March 8 camp to present its candidate for the presidency, adding, however, that he has little faith that the alliance will commit to practicing democracy. U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for Near Eastern Affairs Ann Patterson has urged the Lebanese to choose their leaders on time and away from foreign interference. During a ceremony held on the occasion of the ninth anniversary of the Cedar Revolution in Washington, D.C., Patterson lauded the spirit of, of national pride and independence that brought hundreds of thousands of Lebanese to the streets of Beirut in the aftermath of the assassination of ex-Prime Minister Rafi Hariri in February of 2005. But she lamented that some of the shadows of 2005 have returned, saying Hezbollah members have crossed from Lebanon to fight in the Syrian civil war on behalf of the regime of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, despite the agreement of all the Lebanese parties in the Baghdad Declaration to keep Lebanon at a distance from the region's crisis. The diplomat called on all Lebanese parties to respect the principles laid out in the Baghdad Declaration, the Ta'if Accord and the UN Security Council Resolutions 1559 and 1701. Joining me on the line is co-founder of Cedar Revolution Guard, Monsieur Roger Bejani. Monsieur Bejani, can you hear me? Hear you. What are your reactions to today's parliamentary session? Well, obviously, everybody was expecting such a show. You know, uh, although I believe that Samir Jaja would be, in an ideal world, an excellent president, as I do trust his fairness, vision, uh, probity, and management, I do not think that he will be elected by the present parliament. None of 14 March candidates can or will be elected. I believe that Hezbollah's terror leverage is blocking the way. On the other hand, Hezbollah can hardly impose a puppet such as Lahoud. So we are in a, uh, we are in a deadlock situation. Uh, so we're probably moving towards the Hezbollah scenario whereby Lebanon will be governed for a long time by the present coalition of negations, the government means, that we have today. So until some dramatic development occurs. Lebanese forces leader Samir Jaja said today's practices were unconstitutional. Do you agree with that? Look, this is uh, opening the door to uh, debates uh, on that sort. I'm not a constitution expert, but I think that uh, Jaja is totally right when he said that the constitution was meant to be interpreted positively, that people should come and vote, even if they fo vote for uh, someone who would be a candidate against Samir Jaja. But uh, parliament members are supposed in this present constitution to go show up at the parliament and vote. They're not supposed not to go uh, to the parliament. 
uh, it is uh, rather bizarre to notice that Samir Jaja was the only, only candidate uh, today uh, to be a clear candidate, in fact. He was the only clear candidate. He has played the game by the rules and has showed respect to his compatriots by exposing in a transparent manner his vision. None of the other supposed candidates has played the game respectfully, as Samir did. And uh, who would prevent anyone to go to uh, the coalition of eight months, for instance, to attend the parliamentary, uh, parliamentarian voting session and vote for Aoun, for instance, or Frangi? Yes, uh, who cares? speaking uh, of... So, uh, so they, in their doing, uh, they have twisted the constitution or they have interpreted it ne negatively, in a negative manner. Uh, this is what I think Senijara was trying to say, because the Constitution is not very, very clear uh, about this uh, subject. Uh, the March 8 Alliance says a two-thirds quorum could be achieved if there is consensus over free patriotic movement leader Michel Aoun. What do you think about that? Uh, look, uh, the story of Michel Aoun, it's, you know, it's time for Aoun to make up his mind, because the stake of this election, as made clear by the mouth of Mohammed Raad, is as follows. The presidential election is a battle between, on the one hand, a camp that insists on keeping Lebanon in the eye of the cyclone and insists on cloning the Iranian revolution system to Lebanon, and on the other hand, a camp that insists on erecting a modern, stable, rule of law abiding, peaceful state. So, Aoun, it's about time for him it's, uh, to make up his mind and don't change it in a couple of months. Is he for Hezbollah's vision or is he for its antidote? Jaja has pronounced clearly his option. He is for an opposite vision to Hezbollah's. What about Aoun's vision? Maybe if Aoun adopts Jaja's vision, he would be the constitutional president, maybe. But uh, does he have the guts to do that? So this is the this whole story is here. It's not that who can bring more people to vote for him, because even I, in my personal opinion, Hezbollah wouldn't even accept Aoun as president. They would like to have a puppet. Uh, Aoun has, uh, maybe he's not the profile of the perfect puppet for them. So they prefer not having a president in Baghdad at all, rather than having someone who would uh, turn against them like Sleiman did. So uh, this is what is at stake, and it's a, uh, it's a big battle, and unfortunately Hezbollah has more leverage, because he's using uh, means that the other parties don't have uh, to so, twist so, the game. So Mr. Bujani, do you think there's any hope for consensus? Could we have a new president on May 7th? I don't think so. I think that uh, unless, uh, I don't know, uh, Michel Aoun uh, uh, makes a miracle and uh, cha make Saad Hariri change his mind, which I don't think he will, uh, I don't think we'll have a president uh, by the 25th of May. I think uh, the present government, the uh, government of negation, will uh, continue ruling the country until something happens in the region, in Syria, and I have, I have no idea. Uh, the, the, you know, <laughs> in this part of the world, anything can happen. So uh, I don't think that we'll have a president in Ba'abda before uh, 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 on May 25th. That was co-founder of Cedar Revolution Guard, Mr. Roger Bejani. Thank you so much for being with us today. Several lawmakers have voiced their solidarity with journalists of Al-Jadid TV and Al-Akhbar newspaper who were summoned by the International Court on charges of contempt and obstruction of justice. Hezbollah's MP Hassan Fadlallah told reporters present at the Parliament's press room that the move comes in light of the assault on the freedom of the Lebanese, slamming the special tribunal for Lebanon's action. He called on the Lebanese government to take swift actions to defend the country's sovereignty, constitution and institutions. The STL announced on Thursday that it has summoned Karma Mohammad Tahsin al-Khayyat from al-Jadid and Ibrahim Hamad al-Amin from al-Akhbar to appear before it on two counts of contempt and obstruction of justice. Fadlallah added that they will all take a stance to defend Al-Jadid, Al-Akhbar and all media outlets. He pointed out that the Constitution guarantees the freedom of the media and considers the STL summons an attack against it. For his part, change and reform bloc lawmaker Nabil Nicola stressed the importance of preserving the freedom of the media. The General Labor Confederation has held a protesting demonstration in Riyadh Sola Square to defend livelihood and reject the policy of increasing taxes. GLC's head, Hassan Rosen, said the salary scale is a right and it's the state's duty to finance it via the accumulated profits. Armed clashes broke out between the Lebanese army and Syrian gunmen in the eastern Bikar region of Arsal. The national news agency says a number of soldiers were injured in the incident. 
that took place in the Rahwa region as the army was raiding a warehouse. LBCI television meanwhile reported that, the, that five soldiers were wounded in the fighting as well as two Syrians. The army has since arrested the two wounded. The United Nations have rejected calls for it to deliver humanitarian aid across borders into Syria without the approval of the government in Damascus, saying such operations will be possible only under a stronger UN Security Council resolution. Dozens of top lawyers from around the world argued in a letter to the United Nations that there was no legal barrier for the world body to carry out cross-border aid deliveries or support other organizations to do the same. And coming up next, Iraqis begin voting in parliamentary elections. That and more after the break. Welcome back. And now for news around the world in brief. Iraqis have begun voting in parliamentary elections that are expected to result in a period of difficult coalition building as violence across the country soars close to its worst levels seen in several years. Today's election is the first since U.S. troops pulled out in December of 2011. The Cuban Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki has also voted in the central Baghdad polling station. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani has accused critics of his government of using lies and exaggeration to oppose his policies, including Iran's nuclear talks with world powers and a riposte to hardliners who suggest he is capitulating to the West. In an interview on state television, Rouhani suggested his critics were a tiny minority who had profited from sanctions and feared losing out if curbs were removed with an eventual resolution of Iran's nuclear dispute with the West. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry has warned Russia that the United States and its allies will stand united in their defense of Ukraine. Kerry called the crisis in Ukraine a wake-up call for NATO that requires an alliance-wide effort. This comes as pro-Kremlin rebels have stormed a regional police building and the town hall in the eastern Ukrainian town of Horlivka as the separatists tightened their grip on the country's east. Los Angeles Clippers owner Donald Sterling has been banned for life by the NBA. In response to racist comments, the league says he made in a recorded conversation. Sterling has also been fined $2.5 million, and NBA Commissioner Adam Silver made no effort to hide his outrage over the comments, saying he will try to force the controversial owner to sell his franchise. Silver said the fine will be donated to organizations dedicated to anti-discrimination and tolerance efforts that will be jointly selected by the NBA and the Players Association that were released over the weekend. This marks the end of our bulletin for today. Now for a reminder of our top stories. Lawmakers fail once again to elect a new president as differences between the March 8 and 14 alliances have led to a lack of quorum in the second parliamentary session. Reacting to today's session, Lebanese Forces leader Samir Jaja says the March 8 coalition is threatening to cause vacuum in the presidency. And finally, the UN refuses to deliver humanitarian aid across borders into Syria without the approval of Damascus. Those were today's headlines from us here at Future Tel Television. I'm Linda Sumim, wishing you all a very nice evening.